Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of Motor India Trans Reports Combating Covid Crisis Series. As you are aware, we at Motor India have been sharing regular news and updates related to the Covid-19 with exclusive interviews, webinar and panel discussions with our industry stakeholders and people involved in the automotive industry. Today, I am joined by Mr. Suresh KV, President ZF India Private Limited. Thank you for joining us on Motor India Trans Report. Suresh. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, give the thanks, Rajesh, for this opportunity. Um, yeah, amidst this crisis, uh, it's important that we keep communicating, and I think it's a golden opportunity for us to share our views and also understand as to what others are doing. Thanks sure. for this. Uh, sure. Thanks for this. Sure. So, Suresh, uh, like you mentioned, we are in this unprecedented time period where no one in our lifetime or generation has seen such a situation. How has ZF India coped up with this? With uh, your global expertise and uh, your, you know, uh, presence in different parts of the world, and of course, India was, you know, still the last country to hit off of this COVID pandemic. Did you guys learn or uh, get, get intimidation from your global partners? How did you, you know, prepare for this? And what was your, you know, impact on the business of this COVID-19 pandemic? I think it's it's very important that you touched upon this point of we being global and learning from other areas. Let me tell you, we had a great advantage in this, in this uh, because of the factor, uh, because of the fact that we are present in, uh, in other countries as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a known fact that India was one of the last countries to get into this uh, huge infection issues. And what had happened was uh, somewhere in January, February, the moment we had learned a lot from our Chinese experience, uh, I would say that right from end January and uh, early February, we had started actions which were important at that point in time uh, and also creating awareness within the organization. Okay. I would remember that last week of January itself, we had sanitizers in almost all the meeting rooms. Okay. Uh, we are also started cleaning our, uh, cleaning our hands quite regularly because that was the first set of information which came from China. Okay. We set up a task force globally and mm -hmm. India was part of it. And uh, we had started getting these information as to what are the guidelines we need to follow yeah. as far as COVID prevention is concerned. And because of which we had an, uh, we could share these information with all the plants and not only our own plants, but also our joint venture uh, partners so that all of them could gain from the experience which ZF had across the world. Correct, correct. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, right from first week of February, we started sending out mailers as to what are the things which people need to take care. We started putting travel restrictions. Uh, definitely going out itself was, a, uh, uh, was restricted, not only because of the COVID crisis, but also because the economy was not doing great, even if you look at December, January time frame. We started making sure that... Uh, the quarantining of people had start, uh, had been uh, implemented during those days itself. Uh, right from first week of March, mm -hmm. any person who had come back from any foreign country had to quarantine himself or herself for 14 days. Any mm -hmm. internal travel, any uh, national travel, which is either personal or official, okay. people had to quarantine themselves for seven days. Mm -hmm. And that this really helped us to start to, you know, put a break on possible uh, uh, spread of the infections. Correct, correct. So uh, by around March 10th, 15th time frame, uh, the isolation of people had already started. And what okay. is also important to note that uh, unfortunately, Maharashtra had uh, the increase uh, right from uh, right from early days. Mm -hmm. So the lockdown started by 18th or 19th of yeah. uh, or 20th of March. Correct. By the start of that week itself, mm -hmm. we had uh, we had already uh, uh, started working on uh, ramping down operations because we saw this coming. So, uh, honestly, uh, our global experience, the learnings from other regions uh, helped us a lot to ensure that our people understood what needs to be done and what should not be done as a precaution for COVID infections. 
Wonderful. Really nice, uh, you know, elaborate explanation about how you prepared yourself and your company into uh, combating this COVID crisis. You also touched upon how you went about, uh, you know, containing this spread of virus by isolating people and saving human lives, uh, you know, wherever you could do it possible. And you did it with proper planning. But, uh, you know, when it comes to legislation and the, uh, the norms that, that were changing, we landed in between this, you know, this uh, BS6 transition landed right in middle of the lockdown, the phase one. How did it impact your BS6 transition plan? Although we are aware that, uh, you know, you would have been ready with the, the commercial vehicle speed transmission and other uh, ZF, uh, BS6 compliant products. How did it hamper your plan to sell this and uh, market these products when, when we landed right in the middle of BS6 transition? Actually, Rajesh, I had already mentioned before, as far as ZF products are concerned, we were already BS com BS6 compliant. Uh, I, the impact on the ZF products were winning. The products which we have in the Indian market and which we produce in India are very minimal. Having mm -hmm. said so, uh, so uh, from that perspective, the impact because of a BS4 to BS6 transition mm -hmm. in uh, as far as ZF is concerned, has not been uh, too much. Okay. But uh, what got impacted to, uh, what, how it got it impacted on, the impact which came on ZF was mainly uh, uh, through an indirect uh, path. Uh, okay. If you look at what happened with the OEMs is that right from December, January, when the COVID started, um, uh, the infection started spreading in China, we, the supply chain from China got affected because of which most of the customers had difficulties in getting parts from the different uh, from from the different uh, players in uh, pl players globally we also had our own share of woes uh, we also sourced from china because of which uh, there were supplier disruptions but uh, by the end of february we were able to make sure that you know we were getting materials china started opening up but uh, now what happened is because of the mismatch of uh, the inventory at the OEM at the OEMs, uh, what the demand started dropping. Uh, if you look at uh, if you look at it from March first week time frame. So from that perspective, the impact uh, uh, that is when the impact started affecting us. Uh, so in short, it was not a direct BS4 to BS6 impact. It right. was an indirect one because uh, the OEs struggled. Uh, to get parts from uh, various parts of the world. Got it, got it. And uh, on on terms of your uh, you know production, when you said the demands were lowered or say hampered because of the uh, of course the subdued demand and the lockdown, what is your now plan for say the ramp up of uh, you know start of the operation, and uh, how would you kind of restart or have that if uh, restarted the operations in the lockdown? Four. How has been the demand now? What is the communication between your, uh, you know, your team as well as the the supplier or the the OEM? What are they communicating to you at this point of time? So let me start with uh, uh, how we utilized the COVID uh, lockdown period. Mm -hmm. So um, we were in constant touch with all our employees uh, mm -hmm. uh, through various WhatsApp groups, and we also made sure that we utilized this time to build up some skills, some training program, uh, uh, through uh, some, uh, build up some skills through training programs, which were done online or uh, through, uh, through the various networks we had. And as we started getting uh, the information in the second week of second half of April that we will be able to uh, open the plants uh, pretty soon, um, the preparations for restarting the plants uh, got initiated. The, yeah. Our EHS team, uh, along with uh, along with our global teams, mm -hmm. uh, worked uh, to create a comprehensive restart package, which had inputs not only from the ZF uh, from the ZF world. We took the guidelines which WHO had released. We, we took the guidelines which the government of India had released, okay. and we also had our own few things which we added. With these four inputs, we created a comprehensive checklist. And with that checklist, we started working on as to uh, working on uh, preparing ourselves for the restart of operations, which included as to what will we do when a person 
uh, boards the bus from his residence till we drop him back, him or her back to the, the back to his residence. So we started looking very systematically as to when he boards the bus, what are the precautions we need to take in the bus? What do we need to do when he comes into the factory? What are the first things we need to do? Like making sure that the temperature check is on, making sure that the hand sanitization is on. We are also making sure that the, uh, the, the, the data related his, to his, his or her previous travels, mm -hmm. previous medical history is, uh, is uh, recorded. So, and then the, definitely the physical distancing, which we needed to maintain has also been incorporated by design, not by choice. Right. So, uh, not by chance. So from that perspective, uh, we went in a very systematic manner uh, mm -hmm. to ensure that all the guidelines are being met. So in the shop floor, we have uh, physical distancing maintained mm -hmm. between works. We have also made sure that the meetings are happening with certain guidelines. Canteens have been reoriented to ensure that the physical distancing is maintained. So all these precautions were taken. The mailers and the information went to all employees prior to the day we had to start. So we started operations somewhere on the 5th and 6th of May. And okay. as and when people came in, these mm -hmm. guidelines were already ready and also communicated. To add it, add to this, while there are enough, the, the effectiveness of, network, of uh, digital communication uh, is always a question. And so we made sure that the plant management went into the plant in rotation to ensure mm -hmm. that, you know, our guidelines are, are communicated in person mm -hmm. and also ensure that, you know, it is implemented in letter and spirit. Uh, to the extent that, you know, uh, the last week we improvised uh, and created a small workstation at the entry of the plant where yeah. people can clean their hands with mm -hmm. just a pedal uh, without even touching the touching, uh, touching the sanitizer. So okay. those are all improvements and kaizens we are doing to ensure that you know we are implementing and we are we are really living up to the the message to the to the guidelines which has been prescribed. So that's how it started. Now uh, coming into now the start of the initial few days where yeah. to make sure that you know we are getting back to normalcy, cleaning up the plant. Making sure that, uh, making sure that the uh, the, uh, the the parts which were left unfinished mm -hmm. is completed. Mm -hmm. So we got that back to normal. See, we were in close touch with communication with the customers. The customers, okay. to the best of our their, to their ability, are informing us as to what would the schedules be. Correct. Is it is uh, uh, is it really um, is it really a firm forecast? I think we also need to accept the fact that the customers are also going through a similar exercise. So we need to give them some time to understand as to what their marketing, uh, what their demand would be and hence converting it into our forecast. So I'm sure that towards, uh, uh, anyway, uh, between this week and the next two weeks, we should get back to normalcy as far as customers uh, forecasts are concerned. But what we have already started uh, focusing on is the export business we have? There are a few things, few, uh, few, uh, few parts which we do exports where the demand is still there. So we are really focusing on ensuring that those obligations are met with, okay. and uh, and help, that helps us to slowly but steadily ramp up our, our production options. Correct, correct. And at what stage is the current operation? What percentage is restarted? Uh, we would be at uh, anything between 33 to 50 percent uh, capacity. Okay, okay. And you touched upon exports. Like, uh, which are these uh, you know regions that you would be exporting, and uh, you know what product types would you want to highlight? Basically, uh, mostly it is uh, Europe, and mm -hmm. uh, we are also ex uh, our uh, dampers are the main exports which we do commercial with dampers. All right, all right. And what about uh, the local supply chain? Did you see the local supply chain also, you know, getting back to normalcy? And you you see any you know hindrances there between your vendors or your you know supply chain? How has it been restarting? Uh, I think we should act again here. Also, we should understand that they will also go through the similar struggle. Uh, they will also go through similar struggles. Correct. Um, they are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now it also depends on in which. 
location are they? Are they in a red zone? Are they in an orange zone or a green zone? Are they in quarantine areas? But I also have uh, what happens with most of the most of the uh, supplier community, which uh, and it also partly impacts us, is also that you know the uh, workforce comes from different parts of the country, and uh, now the migrant labor have they come back? And mm. even if they come back, are they in a quarantine? Mm. And etc. Uh, etc. Et has its own impact. I think those things are slowly but steadily getting uh, are improving by the day. Uh, we have ensured that we got our people from different parts of Maharashtra or right. uh, close to Pune uh, yeah. by our own vehicles. Make sure that they are here. Then we will look at whether they need to be quarantined. After yeah. which, after which we will be able to. Um, uh, we will be able to engage them into the uh, into our operations. So okay, okay. I think uh, I think uh, I would only say that you know we need to give time for the entire value chain to get back to uh, at least uh, close to normal. Sure. And you touched upon the the migrant labors. I had a special question related to uh, the contractual labors that you may have or the deep labors working at your plant. Uh, does the reverse migra migration also affect ZF India here? Or are you, you know, have you adopted the uh, technology and digitization at your shop floors? You see, definitely it has impacted us. But can we do a digitization and improvisation in such a short time? Mm. Uh, not. But uh, there are certain learnings we have, uh, mm. which we need to look at in the short term as to how to implement them. Mm. Uh, the question is, you know, uh, I hope we don't have such situations in future. But definitely, you know, we will have a certain productivity improvements, certain uh, 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 certain other improvements which we need to do to ensure that you know the our dependency on on all the labor becomes uh, reduces a bit. But uh, it's that's a, that's a measure which uh, that those are the ideas which we have listed down. And over the next three to six months, we will be going ahead and implementing those things to ensure that tomorrow such a situation arises. We are still able to get back to normalcy faster than what we did now. Correct, correct. And your, you know, take on the stimulus packages by government and the outlook for the industry, both medium term and long term. You see, the stimulus packages are uh, definitely uh, welcome. I think uh, uh, it was a good part on the government's side to ensure that you know. Uh, uh, they have thought through the entire uh, gamut of, uh, or rather, all the functions and all the. Uh, all, they have touched on, touched almost all the points. Uh, what is important for us is to see how this really gets implemented at the ground level. Um, yes. The intent is good. The packages are well designed. Mm. Uh, the question is, you know, uh, how uh, fast and uh, how um, uh, efficient can the implementation happen? Happen to the uh, and the and the and the MSMEs and the others can see this happening at the ground level. Right. Um, as far as the outlook is concerned, uh, we are all looking forward to the September October festival season, and mm. that could be the first instance when we will see the revival uh, to a to a great extent. Uh, yeah. There is one uh, one set of people or one school of thought saying that the industry will ramp up by that point in uh, by, by that time. Okay. There is another school of thought saying that. Mm, will that happen given the uh, given the uh, employment situation in the country? Uh, so we need to wait and watch. I am hopeful that by the festival season we will see some around some amount of turnaround. But um, to get back to the 2019 stages, I feel it will take a good one one and a half years. One and a half years. Okay. Any other uh, inputs or learnings that you have observed and which the automotive industry should take? You know cognizant of and uh, work towards it. I mean, uh, dependence on migrant labor, both for truck and bus industry. Uh, you you may have seen, uh, you know, faster adoption of technologies. Uh, what will this have impact on electric vehicles? Your take on, you know, these topics. You see, um, I think one of the biggest learning is that we need to spread our supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the regionalized regionalization of the supply chain, uh, making sure that we are uh, we are not dependent on a one particular region, whether it is India, whether it is Europe, whether it is China. It's important that we need to have uh, we need to have a uh, we need to reduce the risk of uh, of 
of supply chain is that's one of the biggest learnings i think i as an uh, we as a uh, company has understood um, it's too early to say whether it will have impact on electrification etc but i feel that you know there will be there will be an impact on the demand because uh, because of the uncertainty of the future uh, of of each individual right. which in turn may really boost the aftermarket sales uh, because right. the people will uh, continue to use their aftermarket uh, uh, the, their their existing vehicles yeah uh, I, i'm not very sure whether the physical distancing will lead to an increase in demand of a two wheeler or or of a smaller car i'm not i'm not yet there to say that that would happen mm -hmm. but uh, i think it's a bit too early to give a comment on electrification uh, or 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 the other uh major initiatives which the which the automotive industry is working on it would be better for us to uh, yeah i would think i would think that they will it will we will be able to understand this a bit better as we get to june end of june july when you know all the industries come all the factories and all the uh, organizations come back and then we look at their projects uh, right. and right. Uh, decide on how to take the projects forward right. right. thank you so much for your insights and views and observations on the current crisis suresh it was pleasure speaking to you and we'll keep you posted when this episode comes online thank thank you thank you rajesh for this yeah. once again thank you for this opportunity uh, stay safe stay healthy and uh, let's hope that you know we get back to normalcy pretty soon sure. thank you thank you, thank you.